quick trip down to the allotment today to plant a few more of my winter plants if I dare to with the rats attacking and it seems that they're not touching the chard that I've got growing here luckily but they have demolished the kohlrabi leaves and I know that it's rats rather than slugs because you could obviously have this same damage done by um, slugs or caterpillars but I've got some on the bench at the other end that I haven't yet planted and they've um, demolished them as well and obviously the other things in between would be eaten so it looks like chard is a winning formula down here I mean there's there's some damage here but they haven't done too much damage there's the leftover chilies over there that they've eaten their way through so I'm just letting them decompose down into the soil at least some benefit to them being eaten but they have completely chewed down that's the other way you know they've just completely chewed off the whole head of the kohlrabi so i'm not going to be getting any kohlrabi but on the positive side i am going to get some lovely chard they're looking really good and if i come over to the other bed that's my um, one of my chili plants left there that i'm going to try and overwinter in the beds this year so when the leaves all drop off i'll just prune them back and then um, sort of cover them in something to keep them warm um, then if I come over to this bed next to it, um, you can see that another kohlrabi here. I had a row of large kohlrabi all along here. They were the sort of giant ones. Um, and a plant from this gap that I can't even remember what I planted that's gone completely. Um, but the mustards, these are the purple mustards here. They've eaten some. Like you can see the leaves cut off at the, bottom, at the base there. But at the moment, they've only just... They haven't really started these yet but I do notice that I've got some powdery mildew starting on the lower leaves there so I'm going to pull those off today try and nip that in the bud before it gets bad and I see that they're digging up some of the onions but again on the positive we do have some onions still growing and I've got one um, I think that's Komatsuna or something it's like a type of mustard and then we've got Mizuna growing over there and then there's this really bright purple mustard here which is the first time I've grown up this year um, and some mizuna here there is obviously some sort of damage here which looks likely to be I know, maybe caterpillars can't see any pests on the bottom but I assume it's going to be something like caterpillars or slugs but there's no slug trails at all and the compost is very dry I mean, it needs a water so I don't think it's likely to be I see that there's a mustard over there that's been recently dug up because it's still alive but I'll try planting that and then I'm going to pull out the last of the aubergines today as they aren't going to fruit anymore um, I was going to try and overwinter aubergines but they've had such bad wilt this year that I think I'm best just to eradicate them from the ground really and then maybe grow them in pots next year because the wilt has been pretty bad i mean these plants have been quite relatively resistant to it but i see that they've got some aphids or some aphid shells there where there would have been aphids so hopefully some sort of bug has been eating the actual aphids because i can't see any aphids now it's always good to inspect these sort of things before they get bad and you can just rub them off between your fingers which i did a few weeks ago so maybe that and the wasps i've seen quite a lot of parasitic wasps um, in here, maybe they've been sort of destroying them, so that'll be good. I see that there's a chili there that, for whatever reason, has died off, but some of the chilies are still looking quite healthy. I don't know what. Oh, look, what's this? Caterpillars, you see. So we still have caterpillars in here. I'm just going to squash that, but they're eating quite a lot of the leaves there's quite a lot of damage here so I'll just go through and have a look so it could have been caterpillars down there on the mustard because we're not far away and we've got a couple of um, parsnips I, so I sowed some parsnips direct because they're always best sown direct um, this is where the birds were digging up earlier in the year so we I think we ended up with sort of four parsnip plants here and one over here but 
I've never grown parsnips, so it's a first, so I look forward to eating those. And these are a few of the radish I've planted, which are, um, I think they're like a mooly, I think, from memory. So they're going to be, yeah, I can see a label just there. All these pots blowing around in the wind, I think. Even in here when it's really windy, you get some wind from the vents. And I see that a lot of the onions from this area have been dug up. I did plant quite a lot of onions here, um, but they seem to have been dug up quite badly. And that's our chervil that seems to be doing really well. It obviously loves this bed. Um, it, it really is thriving there, so I'm happy with that. And these chilies, I mean, it's getting quite cold for them. And ordinarily you would dig them up and pop them up and, and prune them back to overwinter. But I'm just going to give it a try in here and see what happens. It's an experiment. I see that they've started to curl, but I can only imagine that's due to sort of the cold temperatures, potentially. And here I've got some um, like perennial onions. It looks like something, the rats have been digging these up as well. I've dug them up and eaten the onion head. Lots of self seed sown. Um, self-seeded calendula down here which again I'll leave to grow because it's great at the end of the bed it's great for pollinators and also it creates like a sticky residue here's the um <laughs> to jets I didn't plant so I'll put those in the compost oh, although saying that lots of self-sown in there so I will rescue those before I'm putting those in the, in the plants in the compost and keep going further along I've got more chili plants I see some of them are still trying to flower but obviously I'm not going to get any crops off them this year but I'll just let them do their thing because it's good for the pollinators late pollinators to see those little flowers lots on here as well the salvia which is always nice and bright in the bed and attracts the pollinators that is a turnip that I planted which um, all the turnips got really bad cabbage root fly so they've got little maggots inside the actual bulb so when I pull them up and try to eat them they're not really the best and the leaves tend to get powdery mildew but it seems to only be affecting those at the moment and I will dig that up and put something else in that patch. This is a fennel a fennel bulb that I planted um, the first year we moved in down here actually. I see that the rats are digging up under there as well but um, obviously the bulbs went woody and it sort of went to flower and it just keeps I don't know whether I could potentially eat these as mini bulbs I don't know but we keep cutting it back at ground and it keeps coming back up again um, apparently fennel bulbs um, are lelopethic I think is the word Lelop and the plants around them don't do very well but the salvia here and these chilies here don't seem to be doing too bad and the aubergines I had in this bed seem to be okay as well so I haven't seen that as being an issue and more of the herbs there as well the lovish so they don't seem to be too bad um yeah and then i've got my lettuce here that has gone to seed so i'm just going to leave that to go to seed for now and coriander that keeps going to seed but you can still eat coriander and i still use this so i just keep cutting it back and hopefully that will last me um you know through part of the winter because they're actually quite hardy coriander so it's a really good herb to grow over the winter months um, yep, just come back round to the other side of the bed where we've got some rocket and this is that bed that has all the mustard from the other side I showed you. I see that there's still one chilli here. That won't be there for long. The um, rats will soon get that, I'm sure. I thought we'd picked all of those. Um, and then on the other side of this bed, we've still got some of these aubergines, the, like little orange aubergines. I've only eaten them a few times in things I'm cooking, but they seem to be quite bitter, so... I don't know if maybe we're letting them get over orange or it's just a variety. I need to do a bit more research. But they have been really, really resistant to the, mil um, to the mildew in here. So they seem to be a good variety. So I just need to work out the best way to cook them. There's the rhubarb in the background, which we're going to mulch this year, cover with some more soil because the crown is showing. And um, you know, see if we can give it a bit of nourishment over winter because it, it was here when we moved here and it's a bit neglected. Uh, I see here the parsley is doing really well. So more of the turnip I mentioned that I see one started to re-shoot here. It's got new growth on it, but 
but it isn't going to do anything. It will be woody. It's been there a while, and it does have will have cabbage root fly in there. Yeah, and the chilies all along here are doing really well. I see that there's, this aubergine has started to go a bit yellow, but I think that is more to do with um, the cold. And I see that there's caterpillar damage here as well, so I might try and find a caterpillar somewhere here. I think potentially it might be a bit dry as well, probably needs a watering. I'm going to keep going further along. We've got more coriander starting to go to flower, and I've got some um, claytonia down here, purslane, which is really great as a salad leaf. That's tasty. Over the back of this bed, there's a few bunches of that. I've planted a few in this area. Over the back of this bed, I've got some dwarf beans that I plant. I sowed really late, sort of October, and just thought I'd give them a try because I've seen somebody else in the area in Guernsey who has been growing beans in December. And I see they're actually starting to flower, so I may actually get some beans on there. And more chilies. I've got lots of chilies along here. I see they're sort of going over the path, so they probably need staking. And I see that a chard over there that I planted is doing really, really well, so. I'll definitely plant more chards in this bed over winter because I've got some. Oh, I've just spotted a pepper in here that I'm going to pick before. It's not ripe, but I'm going to pick it and ripen it at home before, before the rats eat it. And there's some nice calendula that I've still sown there. A few more chilies coming through on this, which are really nice. Actually, I had some the other day. And they're really fruity and just... They are a little bit spicy, but not too spicy. They're more fruity. And that aubergine there hasn't had any wilt either, somehow. Seems to be doing really well. Um, it's got loads of flowers on it, but obviously they're not going to fruit now. But I'll just... The ones that don't have any wilt, I will just leave them and see how they get on over winter. And amongst here, I've interplanted some... Um, this is a nine-headed bird mustard. And... Um, there's some little mustards that were eaten, but it looks like they're coming back potentially. And some orange thyme. There's a couple of orange thyme in there. So we might we might get something out of that bed. If I just whiz down to the end here. And show the other couple of beds that we've got. So down here we've got this amazing chili plant that is absolutely full of um chilies trying to grow, which I know won't, but I can't do I can't bear to cut that back at the moment or it's absolutely covered in flowers. It's beautiful. That's that's been our healthiest plant. I'm not sure which one it is yet, but it is really lovely. It grows these sort of upright yellow chilies that sort of go a little bit orange. I mean that's a little bit deformed, not quite the right size, but they go quite orange. That's been lovely. More coriander dotted in here. And that's actually um a dill over there which has had really bad mildew the dill plants have been really affected with mildew in here i'm not sure if that's normal i need to research that really and there's the variegated peppers over there that were full of fruit until the rats ate them and then in this bed here um we've got some more um i think this is miner's lettuce maybe something like that i've planted i can't really remember what it is I'm sure i would remember but i haven't as usual and that's the type of purslane, but I'm not sure that's too healthy. Again, the bed needs a good water, probably. And there's a couple of onions, but there were lots of onions planted in here and lots of these salads, and they've been dug up. There's not that little chilli there. It's still got quite a few little chilli plants on. Uh, chilli chilies on, chilli fruit. And there's a black one over the back there. There's a um, potato that's just grown from previous potatoes in the ground that we might get some potatoes from. Another aubergine here is the wilt. It's kind of getting worse on some plants. So this plant has been quite resistant as well. This had green aubergines on. And more of the turnips. Again, you can see the mildew. There's some note to self that the turnips seem to get quite badly affected. The new leaves are perfect in the middle, but the outer leaves all seem to get affected by it. More potatoes, a very badly wilt affected plant, aubergine here. It's still got a few fruit on, but these do go orange, but they're meant to be eaten when they're green. And more chilli plants, these need supporting because they're sort of trailing over, so we'll tie those back. 
and then there's a few more aubergines at the back there that aren't looking too bad actually so I might leave those in and give them a chance I think as the plants die off like this I'll remove them because you don't want them to decompose into the soil um, to create any more of that sort of mildew because it does store in the soil so that's important to get rid of those before they rot so that's the right time to get rid of that and then I'll plant some more of my winter leaves there and same for the turnips it's time to start getting rid of those because I don't want any more mildew in here over winter it's something we really struggle with and then um down here we've got some garlic from last year that didn't grow very well that seemed to have sprouted up so we'll leave them to see what happens and we've got some more rocket here it's one of Nikki's favourites so there's rocket dotted in a few places over here is a bit more of the garlic you can see that's just coming up on its own from last year and there's a quite a big one there so um, we planted that this time last year I think and it's just coming up now so <laughs> I suppose that's where we've been watering the beds better and we've enriched the beds so it's just sort of brought them out of their dormancy even though we thought they hadn't done very well last year um, that's that was a some sort of courgette like a scallop shaped courgette so we need to take that out because again the mildew and it's obviously finished and I can plant some things in here although I would like to make the soil a little bit deeper here so I will give all these beds before I plant I put about two centimeters worth of new compost onto that area before I plant in it I'm not going to dig it over because I do no dig but I will just top the bed with a couple of centimeters it doesn't have to be a great deal and more of the turnips over there Again, you can see chilies here with lots of flowers on. They're still trying, they're still, it's six degrees down here today. Or outside at six degrees, I'm not sure the temperature inside because the thermometer's run out of battery. And here I've got um, some uh, salad leaves that are really good over winter. They're very bitter, but they're good to over winter. And this bed, I don't want to say too much, but this bed so far hasn't been massively affected by the rats so hopefully we can keep it like that i can see they've been digging underneath that radish over there so there's radish interplanted here i think they're black cooking radish i've planted in this bed they did all have labels in but obviously something's dug all the labels up and then we've got some more aubergines again not too badly affected by the wilt these ones and then i've got more of this miners lettuce which i noticed is covered in mildew actually so I need to think about what I'm going to do with that and the dill plant with mildew so I need to eradicate all the diseased um, materials oh, I see that that was a mushroom down there that's gone very mouldy so I need to perhaps get rid of that and more garlic sprouting up so there's different places there's a few garlics popping up and some more mushrooms over there that are rotting down so yeah that's those these are all my aubergine Courgettes, chilies, peppers, salad leaves. So these are the main beds on the southern part of the vinery near the main entrance. So we, we've tried to keep our sort of warm weather crops in here over the summer. Um, and I think next year, if we plant them a little bit earlier, they'll have time to get bigger and ripen quicker because they did take a while to establish because they were left in their pots too long. So, and then when we did plant them, they had a bit of transplant shock. So I don't think they have performed as well as they could. And as you can see, they're still trying. I mean, this, I've just walked past this chilli plant and it's got lots of new chilies in. Bearing in mind, Nikki and I went through and cleared all the chilies we could about two weeks ago before the rats ate anymore. And they're still trying to produce more. So that's a good sign. Um, but as I say, just plant them a lot earlier next year. So we'll get them under grow lights in January, the seeds, and then get them out here as early as I can. Because we do have, it is a bit mild here in Guernsey, we don't have as much frost, it doesn't get as cold, and then we obviously have the protection of the glass, so it's worth giving it a try. So thanks for joining me for my little tour of the main hot summer beds, I would call these, that we then will convert over to the winter beds and we'll try to find a solution for the mildew because last year our mustards etc we suffered with a lot of mildew up in this area so we'll see what we can do obviously try to keep keep the plants watered at the soil only not water the actual plants themselves 
open the vents when we can. I mean, we've got the vents closed at the moment just because we had the terrible wind, but we'll come down and open those tomorrow morning to make sure that there's enough um, sort of air circulating. So we'll do what we can. We got rid of all the water barrels that were full of water over winter last year. Um, and we have, we're not wasting the water if it's going down into the, into the well underwater. So we've got a big um, water hole down there, borehole, and the water comes off of the roof and down into that well area. And then that go, gets pumped up into a tower high up that gives us a bit of extra pressure so we can run hoses in here. But hopefully we're doing what we can to, I wouldn't say eradicate, but to reduce the impact of the mildew down here. So thanks for joining me today. It's been nice chatting to you.